So hi guys, uh, today we're going to be starting a series called building a SaaS platform from scratch. So if you don't know what a SaaS is, uh, basically a SaaS means software has a service. And if you don't know what a software has a service is, it's basically just selling your app features or app functionalities in a, in a recurring plan. Usually uh, SaaS businesses have recurring plans, uh, payment plans, which are either monthly, yearly, sometimes even custom. An example of a SaaS business is Adobe Creative Cloud apps. So either Lightroom, Premiere Pro, and lots more. So uh, we're currently going to be building a SaaS business or a SaaS application that helps roommates uh, be able to split chores and split tasks among themselves. This can also be used by house owners or landlords to be able to control their tenants, uh, be it pay payment of rent or payment of uh, bills around the house or splitting some tasks around the house. But in this first version, we're going to be building an MVP, so a minimum viable product that is going to be solely based on student uh, or student and roommate. So the platform will be called Next, not the N-E-X-T Next, it is the K-N-E-X-T-T -T Next. Uh, since I'm not the one uh, behind the name, I, I do have uh, my friend, my friends, which we are working currently together in this project. So I'm going to uh, allow Habib explain what, uh, where the name derived from next. This has been an idea that Habib and our other friend Richard brought up a long time ago, I think three, four years ago. Um, but because now we have the capability of being able to build it and have, we have the time to build it. So we are currently in the phase of uh, building it. So to explain the tech stack we're going to be using. So if you don't know what a tech stack is, is the uh, group of languages and group of um, uh, softwares you're going to use to build this whole platform. So the tech stack we're going to be using is React and React Native on the web and app. We will be using Django Python in the backend. Postgres has the database. Uh, I will tell you in a second why we're choosing SQL database over no SQL database. And we'll be using Firebase for some real-time stuff and FCM which is uh, push notifications on the app. We do currently have a live site where people can register for the beta. So if you want to go there, it is K E E K N, sorry, K N E X double T dot com. So it's next.com. I'm going to link it down in the description below, or you can just click. I think there will be a card here. Okay, so let's get into the video. So I'm just going to allow Habib explain the meaning of uh, next, uh, where he derived the name from. Because uh, yeah. to be honest, I understand the meaning, but I, I want it to. I want you to hear it from the mouth of the bull. Is that how they say it? <laughs> so what next means? This weird spelling of the word next, but in another form. So so we talk about what it means. We have to um, define what the app does at the high level. So at the high level, next is a place where automated rosters are created and managed effectively. Now in this uh, turn by turn um, scenario of things, there are two main actors. One is the person whose turn it currently is, that is the person who is currently supposed to give some value to a group of people. And the other is slightly more important is the person whose turn comes next. That's the person who is supposed to deliver value after the current person is done. Now, we decided to spotlight the next actor rather than the current because the way we see it, based on our experiences and what we are trying to solve, that is the point of um, uncertainty. That's the point where things sometimes go out of hand. The current person is done with what he is supposed to be in whatever context, uh, the school system, roommates who share certain responsibilities. Problem always comes when the next person is supposed to come in. So that's why we decided to throw a spotlight on the next actor and just did a play around the spelling of the of the word. So we are not one of the hundred companies named the next and spelled as N E X T. So at the high level, that's that's where next comes from. Just spotlighting the person who we are trying to solve for. Um, basically, that's it.
Yes. Yeah, so uh, currently, I have another meeting, so I had to drop out from that meeting. We actually finished what we were supposed to talk about. So we were talking about the database design system. So we were trying to design some part of the database, especially with the rosters, uh, because there is this tons. Everyone has a ton. So we're trying to find a. Uh, the most efficient way to design the database so that we don't have problems later on because there are going to be cron jobs running these processes little by little uh, every day i think every day and we're going to be putting it in a queue which uh it is very important i okay i'm just going to go into this meeting i think they're already here uh if you can see i muted myself so they can't see me but i'll go into this meeting and then we'll come back and uh, i will tell you what we have done uh, so far I'm going to uh, tell you why we picked up uh, SQL uh, instead of no SQL because every um, aspiring or every new developer usually go for the uh, through the no SQL route because it's easier and it's more accessible than the SQL. So the main reason why we're using SQL uh, instead of no SQL is because of the queries. Uh, in no SQL, if you know the the queries are not that great compared to SQL, and uh, for me. Uh, with my experience, I have seen that scaling scaling NoSQL is very good. It's easy, uh, but things like transaction, multi-document transaction, for example, MongoDB, does it has multi-document uh, trans transactions, but because of the limitations of that, it takes a lot of uh, CPU uh, to be able to run that transaction. Um, but on SQL, on the SQL part of things, it is way easier and it takes less uh, CPU. So we just just finished talking about how the database uh, table will look like so uh, we parted ways so that we can work go work on uh, our individual task on this project today is Friday so we're going to actually work on it on a Sunday uh, again so I am going to record the second episode of this series on Sunday so stay tuned uh, maybe it might be the next video or the upper video because I do upload every weekend we already have an update on React Native actually the UI built on React Native uh, so we are going to I'm going to show you how the I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the app uh, because it's quite functional it's just that it's not integrated with the API and the backend that we have created here we have an S code uh, with the project next on it it's currently already built yeah so I'm just going to click on run here uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and click this button and we wait for it to install so i have my phone here and i'm going to click on record on my phone so i have my phone right here uh, i'm going to show you the app um so this is me going into the app this is the home screen of the app already we have connected authentication on the app just like i said uh, we have the guest status screen and in the guest added screen, we can click on the guest added button and we can now sign up, which there is a sign up uh, screen. So I'm just going to go back and uh, try to log in now because I have uh, connected tester.com. So this is basically working. The login is basically working. The sign up is still yet to be done. Uh, so I am, I think I made it password 12. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, yeah, so now I'm logged in. If you can see on the on the app, now we have like the home page, which you will see all your activities on the home page. It's like kind of like a very uh, diverse page. You can see on top there are some stats card. We call them stats card. Is uh, the roster, the hub mates, uh, and we call it roster. But there's another uh, word for it later on uh, because this is only the UI. Uh, so when I hit on the top left uh, on that image, it takes me to uh, the calendar. So we currently have like a calendar for you to know when you have a task. So when you look at it, the, these are all the tasks. And we go back and when I swipe to the right, you can see that you have multiple states. So you can be on multiple houses. 
uh, you can see under it we have pending invitations, creator hub settings and whatnot. So I'm going to swipe back, go to messages. It's like messages between your hub mates or your landlord or whatever. Uh, and then we have notifications. We just like a normal notification you have on your Twitter, Instagram. Uh, and then we have profiling profile. We have edit profile, create hub notifications, help logout. So uh, it's still a very basic app because we're trying to uh, do the MVP at the moment. Um, but uh, with time, uh, with time, we're going to add more functionality, but it will all be documented in this, uh, in, in this series. So, um, yeah, so that's the app. Uh, hopefully you like it. Okay. So that's the end of this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to be doing more of the coding and showing you more, uh, tutorial kind of, uh, video. Uh, it's going to be showing you the processes, uh, how we code, how we structure code and, uh, things that you would love to learn um, as a software developer or as an aspiring uh, software developer. Okay, so if you do like this video, please subscribe. And if you want to follow this uh, series, please subscribe. Uh, share to your friends that are aspiring developers, family friends that are aspiring developers, and uh, uh, like the video because it helps uh, push out the video to other people that need the video. Okay, um, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, peace. So the text that we're going to be using. Hell, yep. Yeah, it was good. Okay. Looking at, looking at you. <laughs> okay.